Well, welcome to the Aviation Business Podcast, episode 161, where we're going to talk about taking credit, when to use I and when to use we. Harry Truman, former president, said it is amazing what you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credit. That quote has actually been used many times by many people, but it's amazing what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. That's not the only concept we want to think about when we think about I versus we. But as a leader, it is key to get this distinction clear. Because when things go well, the only good answer for your team is for you to use the word we, right? We were able to do this. Our team has accomplished this because while you may have played a pivotal role in something good happening, taking sole credit is not, uh, well, it's demoralizing to your team to a certain extent. B, it's hubris because without your team, you wouldn't have been able to do all that you are able to do. And it just is a sign of a poor leader. It's a lack of humility. Now, there are times that we need to use I, and that's when things go wrong. I take responsibility that this problem happened. I'm going to see to it that we make this right or that this doesn't happen again. As a leader, we have to get this distinction clear. We accomplished this good thing. We were able to get this done for you. When this didn't go well, I am the person responsible and I'm the one who's going to see to it that this issue is resolved in a healthy way. We're not going to blame others. And we're not going to take credit. Andrew Carnegie said, no man will make a great leader who wants to do it all himself or get all the credit for doing it. So no man will get a great, uh, will make a great leader who wants to do it all himself or get all the credit for doing it. So even if you are doing it yourself, you're only going to get as far as you can take yourself. No, uh, no team uh, has won uh, on one person. One person can can certainly elevate the team. One person can be an inspirational leader and take the team to a higher level, but without the other team members, that team is not going to win and succeed. Uh, Rick Patino, the basketball coach, said humility is the true key to success. I'm going to say that again. Humility is the true key to success. Successful people lose their way at times. They often embrace and overindulge in the, from the fruits of success, thinking we did it all. That's my line. So humility halts this arrogance and self-indulging trap, says Patino. Humble people share the credit and wealth, remaining focused and hungry to continue the journey of success. So if you're leading a team, if you're leading an organization, or whether you just need to lead yourself, be sure that you know when to use we as when sharing credit and recognizing that, and to use the word I when things go wrong. Well, here's your aviation fun fact for the day. And uh, this podcast will be released on August 2nd of 2021. And August 3rd of 2021 is the day that recognizes the 100th anniversary of agricultural aviation. I will be celebrating that day uh, at the uh, Udvarhazy Smithsonian uh, Museum with the National Agricultural Aviation Association. And it's from that organization that I share with you this information. Uh, August 3rd of 1921, a modified Curtis J uh, in six Super Jenny airplane spreads lead arsenic dust over catulpa trees in Ohio in a successful experiment to kill sphinx moth larvae. C.R. Nelly, an entomologist with the Ohio Department of Agriculture, came up with the idea of combating pests uh, with an airplane. The concept was met with skepticism at first, but eventually a cooperative project was arranged to test Nelly's idea. Uh, from the Federal Aviation Experiment Station at McCook uh, Field in Dayton, Ohio. An outbreak of a destructive moth known as the Catulpa Sphinx in nearby Troy, Ohio, would serve as the test case. The first crop dusting test flight targeted a catalpa tree, a grove, I should say, infested by the moth. Catalpa tree was an important natural resource whose wood was used for building fence posts, telephone poles, and railroad ties. The plane was uh, used for the test was called a Jenny, the nickname for an ex-military biplane trainer, officially again, the, the Curtis JN-6. Lieutenant John A. McCready, a pilot of the Jenny, while the passenger, uh, he, boy, I don't get this name right, Etienne, Etienne Dormoy, manually dispensed the, lard ar the, <laughs> the lead arsenic. 
uh, Dormoy uh, designed a crude metal hopper with a hand crank that was bolted to the plane's fuselage. The hopper's capacity was 32 gallons. We'll see an excess of 800 gallons in some aircraft today. So the hopper's capacity was 32 gallons. And on August 3rd, 1921, Lieutenant McCready flew from a cook field to a nearby Catalpa Grove to conduct the crop dusting experiment. In all, the dusting plane passed the grove six times and distributed about 175 pounds of the insecticide. After the short amount of time it took uh, to apply aerially, less than 1% of the insects remained alive on the Catalpa trees after six days of observation of the targeted area. The speed, efficiency, and overwhelming effectiveness of aerial dusting experiments spawned the birth of the agricultural aviation industry. And that industry has come a long way in 100 years to be more precise, to be safer, and to help the world feed its increasing population. So thank you to our brave aerial applicators out there helping to feed the world. Well, that's your aviation fun fact for the day. Until next time, keep your wheels up and your attitude high. Thanks for listening to the Aviation Business Podcast. If you found this episode of value, please share with someone who could benefit from its content. You can stay up to date by subscribing in iTunes or your podcast player of choice. This episode is brought to you by Aris Insurance Solutions, your flight plan for navigating the turbulence in aviation insurance. To find out more, go to arisinsurance.com. That's A-E-R-I-S insurance.com.